Welcome to room 325 of the Britannia Palace Hotel in Buxton. Now outside the Palace Hotel, as it says up there, uh, you've got the sort of car park come garden area. Um, it does say that it's actually situated within five acres of gardens, so I assume that does take the uh, hotel footprint as well uh, in the five acres. But there are some sort of nice areas to sit out in uh, on a lovely day. And what's really nice is you're very close to the centre. So just over that way, there is the uh, the railway station, and then just sort of just round uh, another corner, you've got the town centre. Um, and again, there's even some sort of town centre things down there. So you are very close uh, to the centre and easy just to walk into. I will just update on one thing, and that is that I've said that the parking uh, at the hotel is £4.50. And there are signs all over, I'm just trying to find one, <laughs> uh, saying that the, the parking overnight is £4.50. Um, but actually, uh, we've just checked out now. Um, so when I say £4.50 in the video, actually forget that because they don't charge you now for residents to park. So uh, despite the fact that the signs do say resident parking £4.50, um, that's not the case. So um, yeah, that was a, I suppose a nice surprise uh, thinking we were going to spend it. And in fact, just over there, just down there, just, just, just. I can't see with the sun, it's too too bad, but just down there somewhere, just down there, there is a sign that say, it actually says residence parking £4.50, um, but uh, that doesn't apply. Anyway, onwards. Okay, and into the lift we've got um, six people lift, and to be fair, it is quite a, um, a good sized lift for six people. You can actually get six people uh, in the lift, as you can see. It's, uh, yeah, it's one of the first lifts I've been in that is that. It's not too badly, um, uh, too badly decorated. Uh, obviously there's a few scrapes of people with cases. Um, so, yeah. So just a quick look round. And uh, this is the reception area, and it's got a nice little lounge. And there's a TV at the end, and uh, a nice sitting area should you want to do that. And then looking up the stairs, really nice. Yeah, really nice um, chandelier in the big, massive staircase uh, you can imagine that in Victorian times this would probably be one of the best hotels in the area um, palatial <coughs> as the name suggests but just looking through here and there's another rest area bar and a dinner breakfast area which in our room rate wasn't included um, you have to pay extra for the breakfast. Nice piano there, and you can see a nice sitting area in the bar. And again, a lovely big high ceilings and a real Victorian style building. So really, really nice. And inside the room, and really following on the theme of the hotel, you can see that we've got a really nice big room, really high ceilings, uh, a good bit of space between the uh, wardrobe, the bed, the desk and the bed. Um, so really you've got that big sort of palatial feeling of a room. Uh, you've also got the, uh, as I said, the nice bed, the nice big king size, which is actually looks like two singles, maybe even, yeah, two singles put together, but it does make um, a nice bed. You've also got um, at the coffee table with a couple of chairs, nice relaxing chairs. There is a third bed in here because this is a family room. Um, also, it was good if uh, we'd have fallen out during the night, somebody could have slept in there, but <laughs> we didn't need it as you can see. Right, also, you get some good teas and coffees uh, with three cups, and so you've got likewise enough teas and coffees for three people and milks. 
which is quite handy. A good sized TV. Problem was, because we spent last night here, the problem was with the TV, it has about eight channels. Um, you know, 30 years ago that'd have been a lot. Nowadays, that's not. There's only a few free view channels. Um, okay, so looking around, um, the problems. The problem is, first of all, it isn't ultra clean. Uh, there was a lot of dust. The bedding was clean, bedding was spotless, uh, but there is a lot of dust around. And uh, we happened to notice, because we were just picking something up, but underneath the bed, I'm not sure if you can get it from there, but underneath the bed, there is a sock uh, and some wrapping paper, wrappings, um, which obviously shows that it hasn't been cleaned too thoroughly. Um, the bathroom, it's a very, very strange shaped bathroom, but the first thing you see as you come in, let's just turn the lights on, is that the couple of tiles as you come through are actually cracked and broken. There's quite a few actually, if you look back, uh, that are cracked and broken. Um, but anyway, um, what you've got is some sort of oldie looking a bit worse for wear tiles with a little bit of dirt on them. Uh, but anyway, as you come down the bathroom, you come past the sink and then to the bath. And here we go, that's a bath with an over shower on the bath. Um, not too bad, uh, just seems, I think it's all just a bit strange because it's so long and narrow. Um, and then finally at the end, there's the toilet. But as you'll notice, sort of a look at it straight on, the toilet seat isn't straight so it's not been put on uh, too straight um, there's also a few sort of tiles and holes at the back of the toilet and on the floor so um, yeah very strange but also the other thing that's quite strange is the window yeah so the window it's, it's not a frosted window for the bathroom it's actually as you can see straight out um, into the car park I mean luckily you're not overlooked as such um, as you look out but uh, if you were it's a bit strange that you've got um, only a neck curtain and a clear window which obviously if it's in the dark and you've got the light on people will be able to see straight in anyway so that's the bathroom and then just back into the main room you can see one of the problems with the wardrobe and just really to open the wardrobe first of all uh, you do get extra pillows up there extra blankets ironing board fan because there's no um, no uh, air conditioning uh, you've also got hair dryer extra towels but the problem it's an old really old piece of furniture but again it's been repaired and I don't know if you can see it you can't see it too well but the two drawers there are actually from perhaps another cupboard uh, another wardrobe and they've um, uh, they've been sort of put in there as a repair which don't quite match. And also, the light switch itself, you can't see too well, but it does have a number of cracks in it. Um, and it's always in, and with the bathroom, it's like there's lots and lots of little repairs that need to be done that haven't been done. So it, it's such a shame. Let's just have a look outside quickly. Because outside, it's quite a nice view. You've got what I think is the university across there. Um, it uh, again is, is lovely, it's lovely at night when it's sort of slightly lit up. Um, problem is that clock, it chimes every quarter of an hour right the way through the night. And wow, you do hear it. I mean, obviously the, the window is closed during the night, but um, yeah, it's bongs and chimes every quarter of an hour. And yeah, and I must admit, for an hour and a half I was laid in bed and just counting the different chimes and things it's yeah it can be quite loud but other than that you've not got a bad view you've got a night you know looking out over the hills the car park and then obviously part of the hotel and as you can see over there there is a, a window broken in the hotel looks like it's just been boarded up um, so it looks like the hotel does need a fair amount of repairs okay just also to point out before I go on to facilities very quickly this is the second room in the hotel that we've had the first room when we checked in had a, a terrible smell um, of, um, I would say, air freshener. It was like a lemon air freshener, but it was so overpowering 
that at first it got into the back of your throat, made your eyes steer stream, uh, but eventually the longer you were in it, it started to give you a headache. And whilst that was in the corridor, in your room, it was almost as bad. Uh, so it was a corridor of about five or six rooms, and the room we were in, they'd opened the window, uh, obviously trying to get the, the smell out, but my goodness, you couldn't stand it in there longer than a few minutes, so we had to come out and we had to talk to them. Now, they did change us, and the changes to this room, which is great, the problem was they never said sorry. They didn't say, oh, sorry about that, and yeah, please have another room. It was just, well, it'll dissipate, it'll be fine. And when I said, no, I'm sorry, we do need to change because it is so bad. Um, they reluctantly, I think, but it did, they gave us this room. Um, but it was just the fact that it was, yeah, they just didn't say sorry <laughs> for such a simple word. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't. I mean, we didn't ask for money back. We didn't ask for anything like that. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, so I'll get on to facilities. First of all, there is 20 minutes free Wi-Fi in the lobby. There is no free Wi-Fi in the room. Uh, and you do need to pay for it if you want it. Um, the room itself was actually around £65 uh, for the room that we paid for, which was far smaller than this. So I'm not sure what this rate would be, and I can't check up because I don't have internet. Um, so I can imagine this room being a lot dearer. So I think this room is quite expensive, and the hotel is quite expensive for what you get. Also, there is a car park charge of £4.50 per night. Okay, so, uh, facility, uh, so ratings. The fact that the place needs repairs, the fact that the place is quite dirty with lots of dust, somebody's sock under the bed, um, wrapping under the bed, and you don't get Wi-Fi in the facilities. There is a swimming pool here, but I didn't check that out. But there is a swimming pool with a steam room and sauna, um, which could be very nice, but I haven't checked that. But for the actual room, for the cost of the room, oh, and also, facilities plugs. Down there is the only plug that you have in the room that's not being used. So there's a plug for the kettle, and a plug for the TV that I suppose you can take out. But other than that, that's the only free plug in the room. I would probably rate this room around a 4 to a 5. It's got a good size, it's got a nice-ish view. But really, and it's got some, you know, some a coffee table. Um, but other than that, it doesn't have a lot. And it, it was clean. The clean, sorry, the bedding was clean. Uh, which was nice. Um, but other than that, that's really all it's got. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This has been the uh, pa uh, Britannia Palace Hotel in Buxton, room number 325. Thanks for watching.